And welcome everybody to the premiere video in Holden's Golden Age of Wargaming, a no muss, no fuss, to the point video series on what I believe is the Golden Age of Wargaming from 1970 to 1982. Uh, the subject of the first video will be a Grognard's Guide to Tabletop Simulator, where basically I'll uh, help some of you who have no experience with this program, so hopefully I can get more players playing and have more opponents in the future. Uh, the very first subject will be moving and viewing angles and zooming. So as you can see here, this is just a good old 2D view of the battlefield. And when I play tabletop simulator, I have one hand, my, my right hand on the mouse and the left hand on the W, A and D keys on the keyboard. And with this, you can move around very easily. So W moves you up, S moves you down, A left, D right. Uh, so basically, as you can see, though, so far we're still in the 2D realm. But with the mouse, if you hold down the right mouse button and start moving the mouse, you will find that all of a sudden things become very 3D. Add to that with the mouse scroll wheel, if you push back you'll zoom out push in you'll zoom in uh, basically with that arrangement you can see you can basically get any view you wish of the battlefield <clears throat> going from there we have the help menu uh, basically I'll go through here and explain to you each thing that I use when I play the game so the very first thing would be the camera so the camera view is Basically, there's first person, top down, and third person. I always use third person. Uh, basically, it lets you move around the table as if, as if you would in real life. Uh, the other camera views I find are more limiting. First person, you just, yeah, that's, that's too slow. Uh, I mean, it's kind of cool, but too slow for me. And top down, well, that's kind of like Vassal, I guess, except there's no scroll bars. Uh, you just basically get to move around and it keeps it locked on the map, I guess. So if you don't like the, uh, you know, the change of viewing angle, that would be the view. But we'll go back to third person because that's what I like. Uh, basically after that, if you get into a view and for some reason you can't get out of it, just hit the space bar and that will reset your camera angle. Uh, after that, we have basically manipulating objects. So with Tabletop Simulator, it's more like you have to think like you would playing on a real table. Uh, you're not really, you're, this is you, and this icon right here is your hand. So all you have to do to pick something up is just hover over it, and then hold down the left mouse button. And you can move that anywhere as you want. Uh, basically, move one hex to the next, uh, you can roll a dice, uh, which I'll get into in a little bit. Uh, basically, that's picking objects up. Next thing you want to know is about flipping. Uh, a lot of war games have uh, double-sided counters. So, of course, to flip a counter, you could right-click and get this menu here and go down to flip, or you can just hit the F key, which lets you flip the counter back and forth. Uh, the other thing is in some games, not this one, but some games, you have uh, basically facings for your units. So if right beside the W key, the Q and E, uh, will rotate your counter. Q counterclockwise and E clockwise. Uh, up here, you can see that it doesn't quite turn to each hex side this way. That's because most games have the rotation degrees set at 15. If you want to have it so one click changes your hex side, just go up here and click, put it up to 60 degrees, and when you click once, you'll change the hex side. Uh, but a lot of people like to have a little bit more control than that, so that's why usually I leave it in my mods at 15 degrees. All right, what do we have next? We have rolling dice. So rolling dice and randomizing anything, basically. You hover over the dice. Once again, you can right-click on the menu. And you could hit roll, but why do that when you can just uh, hover over the dice and hit the R button? And a lot of uh, war gamers 
have a roll three times rule for the dice. So hit the R button three times, and there you go. Oh, yeah, that's not what I want to see. Typical luck for me. Uh, next thing would be blindfolding. So I don't see this being used a lot, but if uh, your opponent's doing something and you're not supposed to see or he doesn't want you to see or they don't want you to see, hit the B button. And there you go. You can't see a thing. Uh, what's next after that? The PDFs and charts. Okay, so these charts all here. Uh, basically, there I have these ones locked. What that means is that they, you can't move them around. Uh, so basically, if you'd like to zoom in on it, or not have to zoom all the way in with the wheel, and this goes for counters, basically everything in the game, just hold down the Alt key, and voila, there you go. It will be nice and big. Same thing, well, it's actually a little different for the rule books. The rule books, you can tell it's a PDF, if you see this little arrow here, and that, of course, lets you leaf through the pages. Uh, but say uh, you want to refer to something, but you also want to be over here. How do, you, how do you look at both? Well, see this pop-up screen? Hit that button, and there you go. And you can go anywhere and still refer to the rule book, which I find very handy with these games. Uh, there's, you can also magnify. I don't use this one very much, but I'll show it to you. It's, uh, you just hold down the M key. And you can really zoom in. But as I said, you can also just hover over a counter, hit the Alt key, and you'll see a bigger picture of it. Uh, uh, I guess because I talked about locked, how do you unlock something? Well, see, right now, can't do anything with this. But if you right-click and you go to Toggles, there's a lock. And if you uncheck that, you can now move this chart anywhere as you'd like. I just lock them so they don't you don't accidentally move them you, you want to have them locked unless it's something like a combat results table for example you might want to have that right near the combat where it's happening so but usually you want them locked or else you'll accidentally move them and a lot of times you don't want to uh what's next player color so a lot of people don't uh, pay much attention to this but for a lot of games you need to be a particular size so for this if i go up here to my username and I hit change color you're gonna see these circles show up a color uh, basically this would be the Russians this would be the Germans and this one here in the middle is game masters and you see all hidden information so why would that be useful well for a lot of games you have hands of cards and you don't want the other person to see or you have hidden areas and I have created a hidden area here just for this video so as you can see right now, as the Germans can't see in it. Let's go over there. Yeah, no, I can't see a thing. So if I now change to be the Russian player, all of a sudden that hidden area is now visible. And what does it say? Oh yeah, typical Russians. All right, so that would be hidden areas. So hidden areas and cards, that's why colors are important. Uh, what do we have next on the list? We have states. States are, in this game, used by, actually, let's go back to the action here. So states. So what happens is, is that uh, when a counter has more than two sides, traditionally what would happen in a real world game is you'd have more than uh, one counter. But with Tabletop Simulator, you don't have to do that. So for here, if I go to state, well, first of all, I'll show you this counter right now. We have the first full strength, and then if it's taken one hit, right? And then in the real physical game, you'd have another counter. But for tabletop simulator, all you have to do is go to state and hit the second one. And now we have the, after it's taken a second hit, and after it's taken a third hit, just about to die. So uh, another game I did, which was Flying Circus, uh, there's 22 levels of altitude, so I put in 22 states for every for every level of altitude, and it's all on the one counter as far as the player is concerned. The only thing wrong with it is that little symbol that pops up over the counters, but I mean, after a while, I don't even notice it. Uh, what do we have after that? We have randomizer cups, right? Because those are in this. A lot of the times, there'll be something you need random. And in this game here, for example, Oh, there's a whole bunch of untried units. And the 
players aren't supposed to know what they are. So I have these cups here. You'll see sometimes you'll see these in the, my games, or my mods, not my games. Uh, the uh, and you'll see there's a number. So if you just click on pull out, you're going to get a counter, right? And we don't know what it is, obviously, until you flip it over. But uh, you can just keep pulling them out as you need them. I don't know if everybody knows about that or not. So I just wanted to be or uh, clarify that. Next is something that I just, one of the last things I added to my mods, which I'm really happy about uh, finding because I find it makes the games a lot easier to track and understand for me, and that's these markers. So what I use these for is say uh, this guy moves. Well, when you have a whole bunch of counters after a while, I can't remember what I moved and what I didn't. So I just marked them by putting the counter on top. And I, what I like to do is I just take a counter out of here and then I right click and I hit copy or control C. And then I, with control V on the keyboard, I can make them as much as I want. So then I just, as I move each unit, I throw a, I throw a marker on them. And then once I'm done my movement, it's time for combat. Well, then of course, which units have battled and which units haven't, right? I know it's up, usually, traditionally, it's up to your opponent to keep track, keep you honest. But uh, I find uh, these markers help out a lot with both people being able to keep track of things. So, okay, your movement's done. Hit remove markers. They're all gone. And now you can use them again to track that, hey, this one's attacked. And then this one's attacked. Uh, that would be markers. Okay, next is counter exploder. All right, so for this, we're going to need to stack some counters. And to do that, it's really easy in this. So we just take these, we put them all in a stack, and there we go. And you can even see that it's a stack. It takes the 3D of Tabletop Simulator. Uh, then you right click and you select explode stack. And voila, there you go. Everything that's in the stack, easy to see. Put it back, repack. You can also, if we explode it again, I want this one that was three down in the stack. I like that to move out. So you just bring it out, and then now you're finished, repack. Which I, I find that very, very handy. Uh, there's just a couple of things left to go. I just want to cover the basics here. Uh, that would be uh, hosting a multiplayer game. So we go menu. I would hope if if uh, you don't know how to make a single player game, uh, just let me know in the comments. Any questions, let me know in the comments, and I will make a follow up video answering those questions. All right, so multiplayer. You just go to multiplayer. I usually do the invite. You can have friends, public. I have haven't done that yet, but usually I set it to invite, and I create my server. You then have to pick your game. So we'll pick uh, oh terrible Swift Sword. It's not done yet. But We'll pick that, and then we go up here, and you go invite friends. You hit plus, and then you see all your friends. You click invite. They'll get the message, and then next thing you know, boom, they'll pop in with you. And then they just have to pick the color that they want to play, and you guys are good to go. Uh, you're playing a 10-hour game. Can't finish it all in one sitting, obviously. So after a few hours, it's time to save. To save, you just go up to games, and you go save. You type in a name, uh, test one, we'll say, save. Make sure that you change this again to test one or whatever name you want to use. You can leave it that, but it, it can get confusing because it will say the name of the mod as well. So I always do it twice, save. And now if I go to my games, save load, there's, there's the save game. And next time I get together with my friend, I invite them back, or load up, and invite them in. Uh, and that concludes my first video ever made. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and didn't suffer too much. And hopefully I helped some people out with uh, Tabletop Simulator. And I'll see you guys on the flip side.